Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. And in today's video, we are taking a look at NFL Week 10 with our predictions and pick them for this upcoming week in the NFL. This is a series we've been doing here on the channel. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a like and a comment. Key thing here for pick them, we're talking money line predictions and picks. This is money line, not ATS. Okay, so it's not against the spread but we do talk a little bit about how we favor certain teams. So if you are interested in that, that will be also a part of the video. Make sure you subscribe for more because currently our Pick'em Wizard, Austin, is sitting at 53 and 33, 20 games above uh, with the record there. I'm sitting at a 50 and 36 record. I'm trying hard to catch him, guys. I just can't get there. He keeps out picking me, out uh, making selections over me. I can't get where I want to get against him. He keeps winning it every single week. Uh, and we're looking at four teams here this week that do not have matchups. Houston Texans, Chicago Bears, Cincinnati Bengals, and the New York Giants are all on by this week. So these teams will not be exclusively featured too much throughout this video, but make sure to subscribe if you're a fan of these teams because they will be in our future ones, of course. Now, Austin, let's take a look at our locks here. We'll start with yours. The Arizona Cardinals over the Carolina Panthers. This is one you feel pretty confident about. Uh, you were telling me off stream. What's making you so confident in Arizona over Carolina? I just think it's more about Carolina. I, I have a lot of question marks about Sam Darnold. We both did heading into the season, but then we were kind of blinded by, ooh, he's got, he's got some weapons, right? Um, but now I don't feel as confident in this team. I think Arizona's just too, too good across the board. Uh, hopefully Kyler will be healthy for this game, but I think that Arizona does come out on top. I feel very confident in this one. The big surprise for me this year in Carolina is Robbie Anderson. He just hasn't performed at a level I thought he was going to. He looked dynamite last year for Joe Brady and Matt Rule in Carolina with Teddy. And then you uh, put him back together with a QB he found success with in New York with Sam Darnold. It just hasn't panned out. He's seen a ton of targets. His catch rate's not very good currently. Those two just are not connecting as frequently as I thought they would there in Carolina. That's been really the biggest problem for me with their offense is the lack of chemistry seemingly between Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson. And then for me, I'm looking at the Los Angeles Rams here actually picking a lock in an interdivision matchup over the San Francisco 49ers. The Rams currently at the point we're recording this are down to Tennessee. We're recording this before the final, uh, the final uh, of that Sunday night matchup. So the Rams, I think, are going to come out hungry ready to compete against the division rival, and I think they get the job done in that matchup with Matt Stafford's arm. Upset here. We actually had consensus in our upset pick of the week, Austin. We both went with the Cleveland Browns upsetting the New England Patriots in Foxborough, which is one of the toughest things to do in all sports. Talk about how good the Patriots usually are at home and then why you still opted for the Browns here. Yeah, they're just so consistent, historically speaking, at home. Part of that was due to Tom Brady playing there for so long. However, I still think at this juncture, they're they're just tough to beat there. Bill Belichick really has these guys ready to go. Um, and I think the reason why we pick Cleveland in this game, we're going to trust them in the run game. They can kind of go away from the strength of the Patriots defense, not throwing at that secondary, just running the ball with consistency. Baker Mayfield getting them out in play action. He's playing through an injury right now. Um, so really just making sure that uh, they are going to be run heavy for a majority of this game. Right. They have a ton of strength in the run game. Got a very good offensive line unit. Of course, Jack Conklin did go out with an injury a week ago. So there's a little bit of question marks there. However, Kareem Hunt, uh, you're looking at a really good running back duo with him and Nick Chubb. I love what they uh, have. We also see Dearness Johnson picking up some of the level two when there's been injuries in that backfield. I like what Cleveland has. I think they get it done on the ground as well. Moving into our Thursday night matchup here, we got a good one. The Baltimore Ravens go into Miami. I think Miami's probably the best two and seven team of all time, honestly, in terms of what their roster is. They are a much better team than what their record actually indicates, in my opinion. Now, they haven't played that way this year. I think that they've played to a two and seven level. However, their roster is much better than two and seven, in my opinion. And the Ravens, again, a very good organization. I, I think I have to say that almost every time I bring up the Ravens, just with the way they draft, the way that they develop, uh, Harbaugh is a phenomenal coach there as well. They just have everything working on all levels. We both went with the Baltimore Ravens here. How key is the run game differential here in this one for you? Yeah, once again, it's all about the run here. Lamar Jackson is going to have a huge game against Miami. Uh, like you said, they're a 2-7 and seven team that really shouldn't have been. A lot of people thought this was going to be a playoff-level roster potentially with the strides that we had seen last season. 
And now we have Tua, and obviously he's been in and out of the lineup with injury. I think that's going to be a theme throughout his career. But for the Baltimore Ravens fan, they they played a tough game against Minnesota at home. Uh, and Lamar Jackson is just so dynamic. It, it's going to be hard for Miami to stop the run. I, I think that's why they should be heavy favorites in this game, despite being on the road. Yeah, I, I think Baltimore just pulls this one out. Just a little bit too much talent on both sides of the football for me to pick Miami over them. That's just not going to happen here, even though they're on the road in this matchup. Which brings us here to the Sunday slate. We've got a bunch of really good games, starting with the Saints at the Titans here. Saints coming in at 5-3, and three, and of course the Titans 6-2 and two before Sunday Night Football. Of course, no Jameis Winston in this one. Taysom Hill likely going to be the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints here. And that really impacts my selection. I would have really thought this to be a toss-up game with the Saints had they had Jameis Winston. Uh, With Taysom Hill being the quarterback, I have to go Tennessee here. Even with the absence of Derrick Henry, I still like what they have uh, in that team. I like Jeremy McNichols. I also do like the Adrian Peterson signing. He's shown that he can still run the football when he's been given the opportunity. Austin, why'd you opt for the Titans here? Yeah, two key injuries for both teams last week. Now they head into this matchup, and you do have to have questions about New Orleans and their consistency. Um, they're they're going to have to be a little gimmicky to win this game for sure. Taysom Hill, I don't have the most confidence in heading into this game. I do like Tennessee, especially since they are at home. I just have more confidence in their overall team for sure. That's how I feel as well. Home matchup definitely gives Tennessee a slight hand up in this matchup as well, which then we go to the Bills at the New York Jets, where I don't think the home field advantage is going to be much of a factor at all. I think the Bills, after a loss this week to the Jacksonville Jaguars, come in, circle this interdivision matchup as a, hey, this is a big statement game. We're only a half game ahead of the New England Patriots going into week 10. We need to go beat the New York Jets, and we need to beat them badly. I see the Bills beating the Jets by more than 17 points this next week. The Jets have some question marks about Mike White, what his hand wrist injury looks like from Thursday night football match, uh, the Thursday night matchup this past week. Uh, Zach Wilson probably not going to be ready to go, which means Josh Johnson's probably getting the start in this one. Uh, And I think Josh Allen's going to have a real bounce back game against that Jets secondary. Austin, how do you feel about this matchup? Yeah, too many mistakes for the Buffalo Bills against Jacksonville. Uh, They were moving the ball, but they just kept turning it over. I I think that was a huge issue in that game. They aren't going to do do that again. They're not going to be turning over the ball at the same rate that they were in this past game. I think, uh, unfortunately, they're going to beat up on the Jets, and it's going to be – they're not going to overlook them like they did Jacksonville. I think that was kind of a, a shortcoming for them as well. But this is going to be a big win for Buffalo against the Jets. Uh, unfortunately, with Josh Johnson, you don't have much of a chance. He can be a game manager to an extent, but you don't have the roster around him to make that work. Right. And for Jets fans that are maybe new here to the channel, we're not hating on the Jets. In fact, I am a New York Jets fan. I know all about the struggles. We're two and six for a reason. Josh Johnson's not going to push us to three and six. Uh, I just have my question marks. Now, if Mike White can go, I feel a little bit more confident, but I still see the Bills winning this one easily. Uh, I think Buffalo gets the job done at MetLife. Browns at Patriots here. Another really good matchup. We talked about this one in the opener. We both opted for the Browns as the upset win here in Foxborough. Both teams coming at 5-4. and four. And like we said, the run game is going to be huge here. If Mac Jones doesn't turn the ball over for New England, how close do you think this one is? If the over-unders put at... Um, if the... If the over-under for the spread here, Austin, is put at plus three Browns. So with that being said, plus three and a half Browns. So the Patriots were within three points of winning this game. Would you bet on the Patriots there? I I probably would. I I probably would. This is a tough game to call, to be honest with you. I I just, like we had mentioned in the opener, uh, the Browns are definitely going to have to run the ball with some consistency. Uh, We saw that it wasn't a problem um, this past week. Uh, against Cincinnati. I I think the Browns are rolling. They're not going to be missing Odell Beckham Jr. that much. Uh, It's unfortunate to say because Odell is a very, very talented receiver. However, it's just not how this team's built. And him and Baker have not had a chemistry for years now. We've known about that. So I think they're actually, they're going to be um, just fine. This team is ready to go. I think they get the win on the road. Moving into our next matchup, we got one that, you know, maybe a little bit more of a spread matchup here. Lions who are coming in at 0-8 off of their bye week against the Pittsburgh Steelers who are going to be playing Monday Night Football. They're 4-3 currently. They're looking to go to 5-3 to have this matchup against Detroit. 
tough matchup here, honestly, uh, for the Detroit Lions, just based off of what the Steelers have defensively. Now, the, now the one benefit for Detroit here is you're looking at you have extra time to prepare, whereas the Steelers have a shortened week because of Monday Night Football. Um, of course, their game is at Heinz Field, though. Austin, we both opted for the Steelers. How competitive do you think this matchup's going to be? I, I think it's going to be a closer game than people realize. However, Big Ben has been better in the last couple of weeks. He's had an atrocious start. He's been better. Uh, this is really allowing them to stay in games. I don't think he's going to throw this one, this one away. Uh, the reason he struggles is against pressure, and Detroit doesn't generate that much where it's going to impact him in that kind of way. I do see Pittsburgh winning. It's, once again, really tough to win in, Pitt, in Pittsburgh, and especially if you're the Detroit Lions. It's an uphill battle all night long. Interestingly enough, if the Steelers get the job done against the Chicago Bears on Monday Night Football in Week 9 and then take care of the Lions here, they'll be sitting at 6-3, and three, which for what felt like a very tough start for, of the season, especially offensively for this team, to be at 6-3 and three, possibly by the end of Week 10 could be a very, very pleasant sign for that team and for its fan base. Moving into our next matchup, we've got the 6-2 and two Buccaneers going up against the 2-6 and six Washington football team. This is a playoff rematch of that NFC wildcard game last year where Taylor Heineke kind of lit up Tampa Bay a little bit and put himself on the map, got him that new contract with Washington. However, it just hasn't worked out as much this year. Uh, I think the lack of arm talent has really shown itself to be an issue for Washington. They've also been dealing with some injuries. Of course, Curtis Samuel hasn't been there consistently we both opted for the Buccaneers, Austin. Do we think we get some more Heineke magic in this one? I, I think he's going to flash a little bit. I think just because the stage is so big once again for him. He, he's going to have some of those interesting plays that really make you wonder, like, wow, how are they two and six? However, I, I do think that this is going to be uh, Tampa's game for sure. Tom Brady's leading the league currently in passing yards. Their offense is humming, clicking on all cylinders. Uh, and Washington has been somewhat disappointing defensively. We thought they arguably could have had the best defense in the entire league uh, heading into this season with the development of their defensive line and that back end in that secondary. But it, it's going to be a tough game for Washington to win despite them being at home. Yeah, I think you're just looking at too much talent for Tampa Bay. When their offense is clicking, it's hard for any other team to really handle them. Even, you know, their matchup against the Los Angeles Rams this year was one of the few where I felt, wow, Tampa Bay looks a little outmatched at this point. I think that they've got everything that they need to be competitive with every team in the NFL, and I just don't think Washington has the firepower to keep up with them unless we get some real, real Taylor Heineke magic again this week. Moving here now, we're looking at the Panthers and Arizona Cardinals. This is one of the teams we had looked at as a lock this week. The 8-1 Cardinals versus the 4-5 Panthers. And I think you said it all, Austin, earlier. Talking about Sam Darnold, some of his inconsistencies as the at a quarterback position. And the Cardinals, you know, they can get the job done even without Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins like they did today. Uh, they've got a lot of talent on that team. Really good wide receiver core. What's your biggest takeaway from the Cardinals season thus far? I think it's just the overall play of that defense. They've been quite a bit better than we were anticipating. Uh, even with the corner room that they have, I, I don't have the utmost confidence in them. However, defensively, they have just been better than I was giving them credit for in the offseason. Uh, losing J.J. Watt's huge. However, this team is still built to win. I think defensively, they're going to be able to hold up even in those playoff games. So that, that's my biggest takeaway from this team. I did not give them enough credit during the offseason for some of the moves that they had made. Another over-under question here for you, Austin. Stephon Gilmore has been making plays defensively since getting traded to Carolina and making his debut with the Panthers. If the over-under set at half an interception, so either he does or does not get an interception this week, are you hitting the over or under? I, I'm going to I'm going to hit the under on that one. I, I think that Kyler Murray is not going to turn over the ball in this game. Uh, and I don't see Gilmore getting a pick. Um, however, you know, uh, it's, it's a tough one to call. That's that's kind of a tough over under to to kind of pick an individual player INT. Right. That is the toughest one, probably, because you're looking at really one play there that you have to base your bet on. Uh, we tend to stay away from those type of over under bets on the channel just because of the difficulty to project, project and predict that because it really comes down to one potential play that could change the outcome of that bet. Looking on to our next one here, we got the Vikings and Chargers here. Uh, and it's been a tale of two stories here for these two teams. The Vikings feel probably really disappointed with where they're at. They've been in a lot of close games and could look at themselves probably being a 6-2 and two type of team. 
with the games that they've been in. They just haven't been able to capitalize in those close games with consistency. And then the Chargers, on the other hand, they have to be pretty happy with how things are going. You know, you're rolling a young quarterback out there, young left tackle. You've got a brand new head coach, and you find yourself at 5-3 and three, right in the thick of a playoff race in the AFC West. We both opted for the Chargers here. What makes the Chargers better in this matchup than the Vikings? Yeah, I think it's really going to come down to Keenan Allen and Mike Williams exposing the corners of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, there's just been inconsistent play across the board. Cam Dantzler has taken a step back from last year even. Um, you know, Patrick Peterson, Rashad Breeland, these are guys that were supposed to really fix the back end of that defense, and they just haven't. They haven't been those guys for this team. And that's where the Chargers are going to be throwing the ball a lot, and they're trying to get. they're going to try to get uh, some big chunk plays out of this team. It's hard to nickel and dime the Vikings, but there's times where you can definitely get some chunk plays. That is definitely going to be a concern for the Minnesota Vikings this week with how Mike Williams has performed all year. Austin, if the over-under was placed at 175 yards between Keenan Allen and Mike Williams together for receiving yards, are you hitting the over or under on that one this week? I'm probably going to hit the over on that one. I think both of them will be near that 100-yard mark. And collectively speaking, that put them around 200. So I'm hitting the over on that one. That'll be a fun one to monitor, especially Mike Williams. I think he's going to have a big play this upcoming week against the Minnesota Vikings. I think it's going to be a close game. However, I think the Chargers probably pull this one out near the end. And we could see maybe the end of Mike Zimmer's era in Minnesota this season. Jaguars at Colts here. We got another matchup here. Inner division Jaguars going into Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Colts come in at four and five Jaguars at two and six. Of course, the Jags had the nice win over the Buffalo Bills of a score nine to six in that one. Austin, the Colts ran all over the New York Jets uh, on Thursday Night Football this past week. They're going to be rested up, ready for this matchup. They got to watch the Jags game today in preparation for their matchup this week. Of course, know the, these two teams know each other pretty well as well. Uh, from being in the same division. I opted for the Colts because of how I think Jonathan Taylor is going to dominate this game on the ground. How concerned are you for the Jaguars front seven defensively here? Oh, they're going to get wrecked. Uh, for sure, I think that Jonathan Taylor is going to have over 150 rush yards. Huh. I'm so scared. I, I, It's just, it's frustrating in this division when you have Derrick Henry and you have Jonathan Taylor coming at you. It, it makes for a long season. And this Jaguars run defense is not conducive to face the run. It's really not up the middle of their week at the linebacker spots. I know I, I love Miles Jack, but I, I have my concerns with Wilson. Um, Damian Wilson is not going to get the job done, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a disaster. Austin comes in heavy with that over on the 150 yard mark for Jonathan Taylor. I expect him to have a big day as well. Uh, Jaguars. I just think. You know, they're a young team. They've got a lot of bright spots. But at the same time, I just have concerns about the consistency, the ability to come in week in, week out, and perform, especially against a, a divisional matchup here. I think Colts probably cruise to maybe a 10 or 13 point win in this one, uh, especially at home. Moving to our next matchup, we got the Atlanta Falcons here traveling to Dallas against the Cowboys, who just did not show up today against the Denver Broncos. I think Cowboys fans would probably identify that as a really disappointing loss. Uh, one that I feel like they probably don't think that they should have dropped in that game. Uh, and they dropped it pretty mightily, convincingly even. Uh, the Falcons, a good team. Uh, the, the graphic there, I think, is supposed to actually say 5-4. and four, So my apologies on that as well. Coming at 5-4, and four, the Cowboys at 6-2. and two. Austin, we both opted for the Dallas Cowboys in this one. I think that they bounce back uh, this week and kind of, you know, try and establish that identity of, hey, we're not the team that's going to drop multiple games in a row. We're not that style of team. We're going to come in, uh, perform. What's your thoughts on Dallas? I think Dallas is going to bounce back. They're going to win this game. Uh, it's really going to come down to can Atlanta stop the passing attack of the Dallas Cowboys, which I, I don't think they do. I, I think uh, their secondary is not ready to go up against Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb and also have to face the, the rushing attack as well. I, I just I think it's going to be too much for Atlanta's defense. They've been a little shaky this year, especially at the very start of the season. Uh, I, I do like Dallas a lot in this game. I'm very interested to see how Dallas lines up their cornerbacks in this one as well. Of course, right now Atlanta playing without Calvin Ridley. So you've got some question marks about the number one weapon there. Kyle Pitts, very good tight end, plays out in the slot a lot. We'll see where he lines up most frequently. Uh, and we'll see where Trayvon Diggs ends up playing uh, as well. Probably going to be playing that natural left cornerback spot. But we'll see exactly where he ends up spending most of his time this coming Sunday. 
Moving into our next matchup here, we have Seahawks at, Pan, uh, at Packers. And at the start of the year, this would have seemed like one that we'd want to circle for this week. However, with Geno Smith being the quarterback currently for Seattle with Russell Wilson out, Seahawks coming at three and five, Packers at seven and two. They looked not themselves today without Aaron Rodgers, of course, dropped that one uh, today in non-convincing fashion against the Kansas City Chiefs. We both opted for the Packers here. Austin, are you under the assumption that Aaron Rodgers is back and playing next week? Yeah, I feel pretty good about it if Aaron Rodgers is back. They're at home. They have Geno Smith having to play on the road in a tough environment. I don't love the situation for Seattle. I think Green Bay is going to to definitely handle this one in a convincing fashion. Seattle struggles with their secondary performance, and I think Green Bay takes advantage of that here. Aaron Rodgers is going to have a field day picking apart Seattle's defense, especially on that second and third level. Uh, I see Seattle probably, you know, struggling to get that offense moving to keep up with Green Bay this game. Probably see a 7-10 to 10 point win here at least for Green Bay at home. Eagles at Broncos here. One that we finally have deferred on us. And I've opted for the 3-6 and six Eagles. And you've opted for the 5-4 and four Broncos. They looked really, really good in their win against the Dallas Cowboys in their first game without Von Miller in what feels like an eternity since they had drafted him. Austin, you opted for the Broncos at home here. How much does that mile high altitude play into this one for you, having that home field advantage? And how much does it come down to what quarterback performs better this weekend? Yeah, if the Eagles were at home, I actually probably would have uh, taken them in this game. But since the Broncos are at home, they've just been so effective running the football this season with with Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams, two really, really good backs for them, a nice tandem. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater has been the quarterback they were hoping for. I definitely have things on the right tracks uh, for Vic Fangio. Uh, the Eagles, it, it's just going to be tough to win this one on the road. Uh, they've been up and down. They're a team that'll flash, like against Detroit. They look phenomenal, but you know, I, I just don't know what version of this team we're going to see. For me, the key thing here is the continuation of Jalen Hurts and his development with Devontae Smith. They connected for a touchdown today in their uh, game, and I think that's going to be a key thing to watch here against Denver as well. Can they pull out uh, a little bit more of that connection, that magic that those two guys are hoping to have for the long-term future there in Philadelphia. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be a problem using his legs against Denver. Of course, they don't have the pass rush anymore of Von Miller. So I've got my question marks a little bit about Denver ability to get after Jalen Hurts in this one. I picked the Eagles narrowly. I think this is one of the closer matchups of the week. Looking here now to our Sunday night uh, football matchup, we got the Kansas City Chiefs at 5-4. and four versus the Las Vegas Raiders at five and three. This is a really good matchup. Of course, a matchup here for that AFC West spot. Chiefs need to win this one, in my opinion. I don't think that they can afford to drop to five and five, see the Raiders at six and three, and the Chargers probably up to six and three as well. That puts you in a little bit of a hole there at that point if you're Kansas City. Uh, And I think because of the pressure on them in this matchup, they're gonna go get the job done. Vegas in the past has had their number a little bit during the regular season. Vegas has pulled out some real upset wins. I don't see it this week. I see Kansas City going into Allegiant Stadium, pulling it out. Austin, why are you confident in the Chiefs this week? Because it's a true must win at this juncture in the season. Like you had mentioned, six and three and six and three could be scary for them looking up to their other division rivals. But them sitting at five and four, this is a must, must win. I think they're going to get the job done. I think that uh, th- this c- it's going to be a shootout. I-, I do believe the Raiders are also going to be putting up a lot of points on this Chiefs defense, which has had a lot of issues so far this season. I uh, looked a little better against Green Bay. However, as a whole, uh, a whole body of work, they have not looked good defensively. I do like the Chiefs on the road. All right. If we had a parlay over under bet here, Austin, two and a half touchdowns, and 275 yards passing for Patrick Mahomes in this matchup. Are you hitting the over or the under there? I'm hitting the over on that one. I feel pretty good about that. I I think that both are going to happen. I I do like the Chiefs, or I do like Patrick Mahomes in this one. I think he's got to throw for 300 to win this, and that's probably what's going to happen. It's going to be key to watch how Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs move the ball through the air. My biggest thing is I expect Tyreek Hill to have a really good matchup. Casey Hayward's been playing really well this year. However, I think the speed is going to burn the Las Vegas Raiders this week. And I think that Casey Hayward is going to have his struggles uh, with Tyreek Hill. Moving into our final matchup of the week. Of course, this is the Monday night football matchup. 
here between the Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. I consider this my lock for the week. Rams at 7-1 before their Sunday night matchup with the Tennessee Titans like we talked about earlier in the show. And then the 49ers come in at 3-5. and five. We both opted for LA here. I've already talked about some of my reasons, Austin. Talk about LA, why they're so dynamic this year, what makes them special, and what's key for this matchup. It's been the development of chemistry between Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup. Not a lot of people seen this coming where they were going to connect on such a level like this. Uh, Cooper Cup reminds me a lot of when Golden Tate was in Detroit. However, he's just a much better version of that. And he is really having a career year, arguably the top wide receiver in all of football right now. He's on pace to have some historic numbers for this team. And Matthew Stafford's been the perfect quarterback for this system, for this team. Uh, Wonderful trade that they pulled off. I, I know a lot of people are worried about what they gave up. However, it doesn't matter now. They are right in the thick of the playoff contention and Super Bowl contention this season. Matt Stafford's been a real game changer there. Coming into week nine, Cooper Cup was projected to tie the NFL record for receiving yards in a single season uh, at 1,964 with Calvin Johnson. Now, of course, the interesting thing there is there is an extra game this year. So that does play into it a little bit, but he was leading the league in receiving coming into week nine. We'll see after this matchup with Tennessee where he's sitting going into week 10. However, the Rams just look like a a well-oiled machine offensively. And I think that's really the big thing here. San Francisco, I don't think their cornerbacks are gonna be able to deal with Cooper Cup, his ability to line up all over the field, uh, make plays out of the slot, and also get some yards after the catch as well. I think LA probably cruises in this one to a 10 or 13 point win again. Uh, I just see them as the better team, even as they go into San Francisco. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment because we do have that jersey giveaway going on uh, as well. The Justin Fields jersey for the Chicago Bears. If you want to win that jersey for free, three things you have to do. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel. That's the most important one. And also leave a comment. It could be anything from the words jersey giveaway to something about the actual video itself. Again, hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, uh, glad to have you be a part of what we do here at Utility Sports. And we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.